Hi, and thanks for watching episode three of our trader series. My name is Vincent and I work at Maven. Today I would like to discuss the order book. Um, in the previous episode, we've seen what market, maker, market making entails. And today I would like to explain um, how, for example, a stock trades. You might consider when thinking about a stock, of it being one number, a stock trades $100. So one number, but in reality, it's not that way. In reality, a stock trades as an order book. So on the left part of this slide, you see familiar things. You see a market maker who is willing to buy a particular stock at $99.99 and who is willing to sell the stock for a price a bit higher. And you see many of these market makers. Now, all these market makers have their own opinion and they collapse into an order book. So to give you an example, market maker four wants to buy 100 stocks at 99.96 and wants to sell 100 shares at 100.01. So you can see him sitting here, the 99.96 bid is from market maker four and the 100.01 ask is from the same market maker. And likewise, you see all the bids on the bid volume side and all the asks on the other side. So the best bid, basically the highest bid is 99.99, that's from market maker one. And the best ask is 100, sorry, 100.01, which is from market maker four. So this is what an order book looks like. Now we need to kind of determine a fair price for a particular stock. What is the value of this particular stock? Well, these are three order books. The first two ones very simplified and the third one how it is in reality. So here you can see basically one market maker being present. His bid is 99.99 and his ask is 100.01 and the volumes he is offering are equal. So you can imagine the fair price of this particular stock would be 100 euros or 100 pounds exactly. Right. Here's a bit different already. The bid and ask are the same, but there's a discrepancy in the volumes. Right? So you see here there's 1,000 on the bid and only 100 there. So the true value of this stock is a bit higher. And why higher? Because the bids are providing an upward pressure in the stock and the supply kind of is more downward pressure in the stock. So this fair price of this particular example would be a bit higher than 100 pounds exactly. In reality, it's much more complicated. In reality, you see a lot of market makers being present in the order book. And what really is the true value of this particular stock? It's a hard exercise which defeats the purpose of this, this presentation. Really what I would like to explain is how you as an investor can interact with an order book like this. So for example, we are facing a complicated um, order book and you are entering an order. You want to buy stocks or you want to sell stocks. What do you need to send to the platform, to the exchange? You need to send a couple of specifications. First of all, you need to tell, do I want to buy or sell? Then you need to specify volume. How much do I want to buy? Well, in my example, 300 stocks maybe. Then you have a choice. You either send a limit order to the exchange. You tell, for example, I want to buy 300 shares up to a level at 99.99. I do not want to buy higher than that. It's kind of a safety you put in there. On the other hand, there's a market order. You specify your size, but you do not care about the price you are trading it for. So you just say, give me 300 shares and I don't care about the price. You can already sense that this is a bit more of a risky order because the stock might just spike up and then you get an, a bit of an, uh, an ugly fill, as you would say. So here is an example where I say, this is me. So whenever you see red, it's like our order as an investor. I would like to buy, because I'm on the bid side, 300 stocks at a limit not higher than 99.99. And as you might have recalled from the previous slide, um, no, it's not on the previous slide. So this is 300 from us. And there's 500 of somebody else. So this is the total amount now there on the bid and the 300 out of those 800, that's us. All right. Then there are different types of execution. You can tell the exchange, I want to insert a fill or kill order. This basically says I'm going to send my order to the exchange, to the order book. If I get execution, if I can trade it, then I will get it. If it's not possible to trade, then just revoke my entire order. On the other hand, there's an immediate or cancel order. It's the same as the previous one, but partial fills are possible. For example, here are 100 shares at this price available. If I want to buy those, but I want to buy more, if I want to buy 200, then I'm only getting 100, and the remaining 100 will get revoked, will be canceled. 
Well, a smart order, which is also sometimes provided at certain exchanges, is the iceberg order. Let's say you want to buy an enormous amount of shares, let's say 10,000, and you insert it here, you might spook the market. There is a, they, they notice there's a big buyer suddenly in the market. An iceberg order will allow you to kind of break your big order down into smaller chunks. You would put in only a thousand there, and once you get a fill, it will insert another thousand, and another thousand up until your size is done. So these are kind of the three main types of execution. Okay, there's a lot of information on the slide, but I will talk you through quite slowly since it's a quite an important concept. So let's go back to our limit order of 300 stocks at 99.99. So this is us, and we joined someone else's 500 lots, as I told you before. There were 500 people in front of the queue, 500 shares, and I joined after. Now imagine someone actually decides to sell 600 shares. So somebody is coming from the other side, he wants to sell his shares, looks at what is available on our side and sees, hey, there are 800 people there who want to buy stocks at that level, so I can do 600 stocks to sell. Now the question that should arise is, hey, we are there with 300, somebody else is there at 500. How much would I get and how much would the other person get out of those 600 shares? And that depends on the structure of the exchange. And there are two common structures. And the first one is called price time priority. This means that whoever was there first gets all of it and only after the rest gets it. So consider us here together with the other 500. The other guy was there first, 500 there, and after us we got our 300. So that someone else gets her 500 lot and only after it's our chunk, but given that the seller only had 600 to sell, it's like 500 lots for the first person and only 100 for us. Okay, so how would the order book update? Well, as follows, um, there's like out of the 800 on this side, 600 trade and 200 will be remaining over there. The other side is prorata allocation. So how that works is the exchange will not look at who was there first. It looks like how big are you compared to the other guy, right? So we have out of the 800 in total, 300 is us, and 500 is from the, uh, from the other person. So kind of a portion of three over eight is us and a portion of five over eight is from the other person. And that's what matters. So in this setup, that someone else gets five out of eight times 600 is this amount of stocks, and we will get three out of eight out of the 600 is 225. So in this particular example, we would favor this setup of an exchange because we get 225 in this example, whereas there we only got 100. Yes. Well, feel free to pause the screen a bit since there's uh, quite some information there. Okay, I have two small exercises, or I believe three. Let's say um, I have an IOC buy order of 300 lots and I'm willing to pay 100.01. The question is each time, what will trade and how would the order book update? So with my order here, I'm saying I'm willing to buy, come from this side, as high as 100.01, and I want to buy 300. But there's only 250 available. But if you recall, IOC means partial fills are possible. So I would buy these 250, and the remaining 50 will get cancelled. So that's what you can see here. What trades? 250 contracts will trade at 100.01 and the remaining 50 will not re-enter the order book, it gets cancelled. Second example. What if I send a fill or kill sell order of 1200 lots and my limit, I come from this side, selling, is as low as 99.98. So I come from this side, I look there, how many lots can I sell down to 99.98? Well, I can sell these 500, I can sell these 450, but I have more to sell. And given it's a fill or kill order, it means if I can't get execution, just revoke the whole order. So what trades? Nothing. And the updated order book, it's just unchanged. Last example of the video. Um, what if I send a market sell order of 700 lots? And remember what a market order means. You just want to sell 700 contracts and you don't care about the level. So you just come from this side. Where can I sell 700? Well, you can sell these 500 and you can sell from out of those 450, the remaining 200. 
and the exchange will make sure that you will get the 700 lots at the most favorable price. That's how the structure works. So you are going to sell the 500 at 99.99 and you are going to sell the subsequent 200 at a level deeper. So these are the two trades that will happen and the updated order book will look like this. So in summary, market makers and orders from customers will convert into an order book. Um, Execution depends on exchange rules, like the prorata allocation and the price time uh, priority. Hopefully I gave you an insightful uh, look into order books and stay tuned for more episodes.